Hello class. Sorry it's been so long. Thank you for being patient. Today is a special day. Seeing as how it is our 10th lesson, I decided that today we'll be talking about not only one of the Muppets most popular skits, but also one of the Muppets most popular, you know what, not one of, the, the most popular Muppets cover. That's right. Today we will be talking about the one and only Manamana. Before we begin our history lesson, I want to make a few things clear. First, I am only talking about the song and the skit, not the character. That's a whole nother lesson of its own. Secondly, over the years there have been plenty of rumors and false claims made about this song and I just wanted to clear some of those up. First, Menomena was not written by or for the Muppets. The song was written by Piero Umilani, and I really hope I'm pronouncing that right, in 1968. Secondly, Menomena is not the Muppets theme song. I don't know how we got this confused with dun 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 dun, but apparently some people seem to think this is the Muppets theme song. And lastly, and this is what will lead us into our history lesson, Menomena is not from a porno film. As I said earlier, Menomena was written by Piero Umilani in 1968. It was written for the Italian exploitation documentary about Sweden, make whatever sense of that you will, titled Svizza e Svizza Inferno e Paradiso, or as we like to call it, Sweden, Heaven and Hell. While the film is based mostly around the sexual culture in Sweden, it is very far from being pornography. If this is considered pornography, then it's the most depressing porn I've ever watched, and that's saying something. <clears throat> anyway, now, that doesn't mean it's appropriate for children under the legal age. Outside of some nudity, just some of the imagery and topics discussed in the film can be pretty disturbing and I'll admit there were parts where I was like I can't watch this this is really messed up so where does Menomena fit into all of this right here Menomena. yes this is the first use of the song Menomena Menomena After the movie was released, the song was used on the Red Skelton show during silent skits. Sort of how people use the Benny Hill music. Then, on November 27th of 1969, episode 14 of Sesame Street aired, which contained this skit. Manamana. 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 This was the first time the Muppets performed Menomena. What educational purpose does it serve? It stars a character being played by Jim Henson, who is not Menomena, but that's a whole nother discussion. Being backed up by two girls performed by Loretta Long and Frank Oz. Let's think about this though. This is a song that originated from an Italian exploitation film being used in a children's program. If that sounds crazy to you, the first season of Sesame Street was just very weird. The next performance of Menomena, and the one that set the standard for the rest of time, came just three days later on The Ed Sullivan Show. This time, the song was sung by a somewhat similar looking Muppet, this time named Menomena. Again, being performed by Jim Henson. This time, however, he was backed up by two cow-like alien creatures called Snouts. 
or snows, or however you say it. The sketch ends with Manamana tackling the two snouts and destroying the camera. The sketch was an immediate success and was performed on several other variety shows, such as The Dick Cavett Show, Pure Goldie, This Is Tom Jones, and most notably, <laughs> Moving With Nancy, Nice and Easy. <laughs> oh, I love saying that. Now let's jump forward to 1977. The first season of The Muppet Show featured several of the already well-established variety show songs and sketches, which makes sense. Go with what you know already works. It should come as no surprise that the first episode of The Muppet Show started off with a song that everybody loved, Mana Mana. This is undoubtedly the most famous performance of the song by The Muppets. The difference between the variety show version and this one is the ending. Instead of destroying the camera, Manamana runs off stage, out of the theater, and then this. Hello? Okay, just a second. It's for you. Manamana. Strangely and somewhat unfortunately, after the performance of Manamana on Sesame Street, Whenever this song would be covered, it was always credited to the Muppets. Very rarely Piero Umilani, which, as much as I love the Muppets version, the guy who wrote it deserves credit. The next performance wasn't on screen, but was instead illustrated beautifully for the Muppet Show book, which I've talked about before. And that was sort of the end for Menomena for a while. It wouldn't be seen again until after the passing of Jim Henson, where it was used as one of the songs played outside of Muppet Vision 3D at Disney's Hollywood Studios, then known as MGM Studios. During the 90s, the song became somewhat of a gag, or just that song that they would immediately go to when they needed something, such as the Sandra Bullock episode of Muppets Tonight. There's a skit between Kermit and Sandra and this happens. Phenomena. 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 Now, that is a great sketch. I love it. But after this, the song exploded. It was performed during The Muppet Show Live, a Jerry Lewis telethon, Barnes & Noble, the Disney Cruise Line, this orange commercial, Good Morning America, Jim Henson's Musical World, and was notably featured during the credits of the 2011 Muppets movie, which featured the human characters and cameo appearances singing along with it. But the most unique use of the song was for a charity in New Zealand. In 2011, the Muppets launched a Facebook app called the Manamana Phenomena, which allowed users to film themselves singing it and then like have the character sing along and yeah it's it, the most recent appearance the most recent appearance was during the season finale of the muppets in 2016. if you've never mind if by some insane chance you have never seen or heard monomena please tell me what the current rent rate is for rock since you clearly live under one. If you'd like to find performances of the song, you can of course find them on YouTube, but as for media release, it's a little weird. The Sesame Street version has never been released in its entirety, like a couple clips here and there, but that's it. And that's a shame. You can find the Ed Sullivan performance on Muppet Magic. The Muppet Show version is of course on the season one DVD and you can find it 
on the VHS tapes The Muppets Review and Meet the Muppets. The song has been released on several different albums over the years, and I guarantee if you own a Muppet Show album or a compilation album, you've got Menomina somewhere. And that is the history of the Muppets and Menomina. So I guess the biggest question to ask is, why is this song so popular? Well, it's a song that anyone from anywhere can sing. It's all nonsense words, so regardless of what language you speak, you can sing along. And it's extremely catchy. It has a lot of that old school Muppet weirdness and the chaos that made them a household name. Jim and his crew took a song that could have just remained a silly novelty song and turned it into, well, a phenomenon. It has been performed so many times, yet somehow never overstays its welcome. It's about as important to the Muppets as the Rainbow Connection and It's Not Easy Being Green. It's a defining moment, a, a landmark of such, in the world of Muppet history. And it's all thanks to an Italian exploitation film about sex in Sweden. Speaking of sex in Sweden, it looks as though our time for today is up. As always, I hope you enjoyed the lesson, maybe you learned something, and if you have any requests or questions, please leave them in the comments section below. But until next time, class dismissed.